Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another episode of Hearts of Iron 4 with the Battle of the Silo Heights mod, also known as uh, Germany and Sig April 1945 mod. So having crushed the Americans in the Ruhr pocket and having, let's say, uh, reoccupied France for the second time, uh, you know, I, I was kind of feeling that, that the worst part was over. Um, but too late, actually at the end of the recording I realized, oh god, I am playing on Elite and I did buff to the maximum all of my major enemies, namely France, the US, the UK and the Soviet Union. Because holy cowboys, I, I swear to you, these recording, one hour and a half of recording, dro drove me insane. Because the uh, on one hand, I didn't have enough troops to uh, man the entire front line as well as repel the um, the Allied uh, naval invasions. Uh, and yeah, the Allies just the Allies they kept coming like non-stop in Norway, um, the Netherlands, uh, I think even Belgium at some point, and then Italy. Um, here right now you see that the, the, the Soviets attempted a, a landing in France. This was the, the last, the first and last att attempt that I've seen from the Soviets um, in landing in uh, occupied Europe. But otherwise, oh my god, uh, it was really a nightmare, a micromanagement nightmare. Um, also because I realized maybe too late that uh, by buffing the AI I must have buffed their offensive and defensive capabilities. Um, what really I think that really saved me uh, was that in the very early stages of the campaign I managed to um, save all of my divisions, uh, which on one hand was good because I, I, I had like um, units on the map to, that I, I could use to shuffle around and ideally um, put them onto uh, ports and use them to delay the Allied advance and the Allied amphibious uh, invasions. On the other hand, this put a tremendous constraint on my um, industrial production because I had to. I had like a deficit of a nearly 95,000 rifles, uh, 5,000 tanks. Uh, 2,000 um, fighters, uh, 1,500 um, twin-engine bombers, because yes, I, I, at the beginning I focused most of my production on planes, planes to uh, kind of fight and compete with the Allies for um, air superiority, which I managed to do uh, by selectively concentrating my uh, by concentrating by merging together, sorry, my fighter and bomber wings, and by concentrating them on specific uh, theater of operations. But despite this, and despite like simplifying my my templates, by the way, too late again. I realized that this mod has the uh, 20 combat with standardized uh, terrain. So um, for the next attempt. I will just make 30 combat with uh, divisions, and uh, yeah, um, I realized that without air support, my units were just toasted. Were just toast for, for the enemy um, divisions, which were I think bigger. And um, even though in in very often they would fight under my own air superiority and close air support, uh, they were still packing quite a punch. And uh, while I was struggling with the, let's say, the Italian, the Yugoslavian, the Norwegian and the Western European Front, I decided to launch an all-out assault against uh, the, the Soviet Union. Um, the plan was just to assign three, let's say, um, um, Oh my God! How are they called? The the the, the front of uh, of of advances to three of my field marshals. Um, but things, as always, they degenerated pretty quickly. The AI mixed the uh, field marshal front lines, and at the end, it just diluted the the entire front line, the the entire field marshal orders across the three front lines. Which again, I was like, you know, I want to focus on the Western Front while the AI is taking care of the Eastern Front. But no, this turned out to be a pretty big mistake. The only good thing that the AI did on the Eastern Front was to advance at, at full speed without stopping. And uh, thereby, um, the AI managed to 
uh, pretty much cripple the, um, the the Red Army, while the Allied Army seemed to have just millions of men and troops and materials. And uh, when I realized that Turkey was in the war against me, I was like, oh my god, I need to take care of that theater of war as well. And my commitment into that theater of war um, almost, almost um, caused me the loss of, I think, 50 divisions because um, I could not focus on, on, on everything. I was just, okay, I just need to micromanage this and that. And uh, at some point, I, f I found out that the majority, I would say, yeah, 50 -ish divisions were completely cut off from supplies because um, m my idea was okay i can maybe trap the allied divisions in iraq iran and uh, and the caucasus um, but uh, again at the end of the recording i realized where my mistake has been my mistake was again to to leave to the ai the handling of the let's say turkish slash the caucasian uh pocket and because the ai for for some reasons never attacked the islands of Rodos and the, the small islands which are connected to mainland Turkey, um, I think that the Allied AI was just um, reinforcing endlessly those um, those those, those, those uh, islands and then from there it would just push behind my lines. Um, yeah, you will see like in this case I had uh, to rescue one of my mechanized divisions. Um, this kind of micromanagement, uh, I had to do it at some point to um, focus uh, against the Soviet supply lines because, um, yeah, I mean, crippling the Soviet Union is difficult, it's challenging, and um, yeah, it, require, it requires a lot of micromanagement, uh, which, you know, it's always the same story. Always follow the rail lines, um, railway lines and uh, get as many enemy supply depots as possible because uh, the ones that you get means um, are the ones that you, the enemy cannot benefit from anymore so yeah it's it's a win-win for for you um, at the end and um, yeah it took me like a, an enormous amount of time and effort and, uh, and micromanagement and thinking and reasoning and, and yeah but in the end I managed it I I, yeah, I capitulated the Soviet Union, I grabbed all the territory, and um, yeah, I assumed that with the, let's say, r resurgence of the uh, Reich and the fall of the Soviet Union, the Allied would have just made suit for peace with the, the new Germany. So, um, yeah, given the, the headaches that I had from recording this episode, um, I decided to end it here. Uh, but nevertheless, don't get despaired, because... I will still attempt the April 27, 1945 scenario, which in my opinion will be way more interesting than this one. Um, yeah, having said that, folks, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I wish you all the best and I'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>